continue. Now let's move to question number nine. Question number nine, it says to us, A, B, C, D is a parallelogram. A, B, C, D, ah, okay, is parallelogram. You see, for a fact that you are told it is a parallelogram, you know, what do you know about parallelogram? The opposite sides are equal, the opposite sides are parallel. That's the major thing that we know. But we don't see the diagonals, so we can, really cannot talk about the diagonals. But that's the first thing that we know. Oh, that means you are, about, you are not told that AD is parallel to BC. Mara, you are told that ABCD is a parallel. That means this is parallel to that. They don't even have to indicate it for you. You just have to know it. AB is parallel to DC. You just have to know it. Let's just do it so that we don't forget when we do the calculations. This is parallel to this. Uh, this will be parallel to that because this is, we are told it's a parallelogram. You are safe to say this. Remember, you don't assume unless if you are told. Now, okay, it is a parallelogram and therefore BH bisect. These two words are different. Bisect and intersect. Those two words are different. When they say bisect, something that bisects, it cuts into two equals. Okay? You can have line AB and they say this line, it cuts through line AB. You can have line AB, and they say this line, it cuts through line AB. But if this side is equal to this side, that means this line, it is called bisector. But you see, this line, it cuts through AB, but you can say that this side, it is not equal to that side. You can even see. So this line, it is called intersector intersector a line that cuts into two equal it is called the bisector but a line that, that just cut it is called intersector again a bisector can bisect a side can also bisect an angle so if you have an angle like this and then you have a bisector this angle will be equal to that angle this line it is called bisector but if you have an angle let's say it's 60 degrees and then we cut that 60 degrees this angle it is not equal to that angle this line will be intersector so you need to be careful and you need to understand your work so we need to talk about the bisector we're talking about the line that cuts into two equals okay so bh is a bisector let's go let's go and look for bh where is bh this is bh it bisect what a, B, C, A, angle B, C. You see this huge angle, this huge angle. So that means this huge angle, it will be bisected by B, H. That means B, angle B, 1 will be equals to angle B, 2. This statement over here, it only tells us angle B, 1 will be the same as angle B, 2. This is what it tells us. That's very important, guys. And then again, they say H, C, bisects B, angle C, D. H, C, this is HC. It bisects B, C, D. This huge angle. That means, again, C1 will be equal to C2. From the statement only. That's why you need to read to understand the statement. Now, A angle B, C is equal to 60 degrees. A angle B, C. A angle B, C. The very same huge angle. Let me see. It's going to be 30, 30. But this huge angle is going to be equal to 60 degrees. And also angle F, which is this angle over here, is equal to 120 degrees. And obtuse angle is greater than 90. You can see that. This is acute. It's less than 60, 90. This is greater than 90. Anyways, BH is parallel to GC. Where is BH? You are, it is also indicated BH. It is parallel to GC, which is indicated over there. I was supposed to use three lines. Let me use three lines there because they have already used two ones. And um, H, uh, BG, where is BG? Let's have a look at BG. So that means here I'm going to use different lines, but it's fine. BG, it is parallel to HC. Here it is. AD is produced to E. AD is produced to E. You know what does that tell us? It tells us this is a straight line. This is a straight line. That's what it tells us. Um, Such that AB, where is AB? I agree the, the AD it is produced to E such that AB 
is equals to DE. Both of them is indicated 30 centimeters, 30 centimeters. And therefore, BC is produced to F, again, another straight line. That's very important, guys. Don't just read because you have to read. You need to understand so that when you solve, you apply whatever that you are told. Because Euclidean geometry, you don't assume unless if you are told. Like on the statement, we are told everything. So you're going to use everything that you are told to answer your questions. That's how you need to read your statements first. So now let us answer the questions. Prove that angle C1 is equal to 60 degrees. We want to prove that this angle, it is actually 60 degrees. But the question is, how are we going to prove that? Now, we're going to use all of the principles that we know. All the principles that we know. Ne? Angle C1. Look, we want to calculate C1. For three marks, we want to calculate C1. But how are we going to calculate C1? C1 is the same as C2. That's what we know, number one. C1 is the, yeah, red color. C1 is the same as C2. Because of HC, it is a bisector, right? That's why we're saying they're equal, number one. Number two, we know that this huge angle, let me write it in blue. This huge angle, it is a division, equal division of these two angles, which is C1 and C2. If this angle is 600, I'm just making an example. If this angle is 600, that means C1 and C2 will be 300, 300, because we need to bisect this angle into half. So the question is, are we, are we going to be able to get C2 so that we can say C2 is the same as C1 and then we know that C1 is 60. We can't cal calculate C2. We can't, like we can use our diagram. It's impossible to get C2. Okay, can we get the huge angle, which is the blue angle? Can we get that and yeah, and then take the half of that angle? We can get the blue angle, but how? That's the question. Check. Remember, a, B, C, D is a parallelogram. That means this side, which is A, D, is parallel to this side, which is D, C. So from the parallel side, we can use co-interior because we are given this angle that it is 60 degrees. So that means we're going to have to calculate the blue angle by using this angle. We know that when we have the parallel lines, this is U shape, U shape. We know that when we have the parallel lines, these angles, when you add them, they're going to give you 180 degrees, which is called interior angles. So we're going to have to determine this blue angle, which is called DCB. So we're going to say, to answer question number 9.1, let us determine this angle first. How are we going to do it? We're going to say, um, D angle C, B plus A angle B C will be 180 degrees. Why am I saying this? This is not linear, it's not straight line, but it is what? It is co interior angles. Why do you say? These are co-interior angles. You mentioned because AB is parallel to DC, right? I agree also mentioned that they are alternating because you had parallel lines. They are corresponding because they are parallel. They are co-interior. You mentioned that AB is for max. If you don't do that, you're not going to get your max. AB, it is actually parallel to DC. You mentioned that. That's why you say these angles, when you add them, they're going to give you 180 degrees. They are within parallel lines. Now, what is DCB? Uh, DCB, it is actually angle C1 plus angle C2. Then what is ABC? A angle BC, we are given. It's 60 degrees. Here it is. And we also indicated on our diagram that this angle, it is 60 degrees, which is equal to 180 degrees. So that means angle C1 plus angle C2 will be equals to how much? Will be equals to 120 degrees. You're going to take your 60 that side. It's going to be 180 minus 60. Let me confirm on my calculator. And I get this. It's 120 degrees. But remember, these two angles are equal. But 
angle C1 is equal to angle C2 because we know that HC bisect bisects what? HC bisects D angle C B. That's why we're saying they are equal. So that means here I have angle C1, which is what I'm looking for. Angle C2, I'm going to substitute C2. Remember, we said C2 is the same as C1. So that means C2 is the same as C1. I'm substituting now C2 as C1. And therefore, I have 120 degrees. These are the like terms. I have two angle C1, which is 120 degrees. I divide both sides by two. That means C1 will be 60 degrees. Then we proved that angle C1, it is actually 60 degrees. Right? That's how we solve 9.1. 9.2. For two marks, it says to us, B, G, a B G C H B G C H prove that this is a rectangle. You need to prove that it is a rectangle. So again, love the nice thing about rectangle again is that you have to prove that these angles, both of them, they are 90 degrees. If you prove that you are good, you don't have to complicate your life to prove that. Sides are equal, parallel sides. If you have to do that, you're going to have to prove this side and this side are equal. This side and this side are equal and parallel. But in this case, you can just prove that this angle, we know that rectangle, the interior angles of rectangle, all of them, they're equals to 90 degrees. In this case, we just only need to prove that this is 90 degrees. This is also 90 degrees. So that means you need to prove that B2 plus B3 is 90 degrees and C1 and C2 is equals to 90 degrees. That's what we need to prove, okay? So let me use a different um, color so that we really do not confuse ourselves. Well, let me erase here. Um, okay, let me use different color. So now you know which diagram we are dealing with. So we need to prove that here we have 90 degrees. We also need to prove that here we have 90 degrees so we can say this is a rectangle. So how are we going to do that? Now, we have B, we can determine the magnitude of B2 because we know that the whole angle is 60 degrees. So that means B2 is 30 because B1 is also 30. We can determine C1 again. Ah, we've proven that C1 is 60 degrees. Okay, we are good. So that means we need B3. B2, Risha. B3, we need it. So how are we going to determine B3? I'm sure some of you can already see that. B3 and the C1 are the same. Can you see why? We have Z. Look, we have this Z, alternating angles. So HC, it is parallel to BG. When these sides are parallel, that means this C1 will be the same as B3 which is our Z alternating angles. So let us firstly determine B3. So we can say angle B3 will be equals to how much? Will be equals to angle C1, which is both of them, they are equals to 60 degrees, right? Because we've proven that C1 is 60 degrees. So why do we say those angles are equal? Because they alternate. Those are the alternating angles. They form Z. We say those are the alternating angles. So why do the angles alternate? It's because HC, it is parallel to BG. You cannot say angles are alternating if you are not given or if you didn't prove that these sides are parallel. You need to prove first or you need to be told that the sides are parallel. Unless or otherwise, it is not, it's not true. It is not true. So we managed to get B3. Let us talk about B2. So that means angle B2 will be equals to how much? Angle B2 will be equals to 30 degrees. Why angle B2 is equals to 30 degrees? Because HB is a bisector. HB 
bisect which angle a b c um a b c a angle b c so that's why we say in b2 it's 30 degrees you don't just write this 30 degrees we need to understand why now um now we can see that we can add what is it it was my cursor now oh now we can see that this is equals to the um when we add b2 and b3 we can get the results later on it's fine now let us jump here we'll add them later on or you can just add them it is still fine or you can just add them let's just add them there so you're gonna say h angle b g which is this angle which is this angle h angle b g is gonna be equals to how much it's gonna be equals to b2 plus b3 b2 plus b3 uh which is uh, b2 is how much it's 30 30 degrees plus 60 degrees when we add them together we get 90 degrees now let us talk about this one again if this color is confusing me here let us talk about this one then. Let us talk about this one then. Now we need C1 and C4. C1, we are set. It's 60 degrees, right? Angle C1, it is 60 degrees. Proven in 9.1, right? Now, what is angle? Let me write here, okay? Let me just utilize this space over here. So what is angle C4? Angle C4 will be equals to how much look again angle c4 will be the same as angle b2 which is alternating angle c4 check we have this z can you see that um and then we have parallel lines which is bh and gc so we can say angle c4 will be equals to angle b2 which is both of them that equals to how much we said b2 here is equals to 30 degrees now what will be the reason those are the alternating angles once more again then why do we say they alternate because bh it is parallel to gc to gc now um now we know c4 now we know c1 we can say that h c angle c g will be equals to angle c4 plus angle c1 c4 it is 30 degrees c1 we said it is 60 degrees when we add them together we get 90 degrees therefore we can simply say that what is the diagram b g what we can say b g c h is a what is a rectangle right um is a rectangle do we need a reason yes we need a reason we can say that um because b g c h is i don't have to say b g c h i'm gonna complicate life here you can just say this is the reason right I don't know why I choose this color. It's confusing me. So we can say that um, interior angles equals to 90 degrees. Né? We can say that interior angles is equals to 90 degrees. It's a parallelogram with interior angles with 90 degrees. Interior. Let me do this. I'm changing the color, né? And let me erase first. You can say that because I really do not see this color over here. It's confusing myself now. 
um, let me use the red one, this red. So you can say that B G C H is a parallelogram with angles equals to 90 degrees because you just proven that this is 90 degrees this is 90 degrees but you never spoke about the sides because you need to understand that even a square can have 90 degrees so we didn't say much by saying we have 90 degrees giving a reason we can see that this side is parallel to this side this side is parallel to this side it's like a parallelogram but this parallelogram it has 90 degrees in it so that means it is not a parallelogram then it is a rectangle because rectangle and parallelogram are the same it's just that rectangle has 90 degrees in it therefore we are done therefore this is your marks for two marks you get it actually this is there is a shorter way but i don't want to confuse you i feel like this is the way to do it and therefore you are done you get your two marks just like that Now, 9.4, it says to us, prove that DC is parallel to EF. Um, DC is parallel to EF. DC, where is DC? Sorry. Uh, DC, it is actually parallel to EF. <laughs> Sorry. We need to prove that DC, it is parallel to EF. This is what is happening. We never spoke about this angle, which is 120 degrees so far. But I can see that this angle can work. How? When you have parallel lines, again, like this, when we add this angle to this angle, you're supposed to get 180 degrees, which is um, the co-interior angles. So that means in this case, we are not given that these lines are parallel. We need to prove it. Actually, they are parallel. So that means we need to determine these angles. And then when we add these angles, and then if we get 180 degrees, that means these lines are parallel. So here already we have 120 degrees. So that means we're going to have to calculate C3. But how are you going to calculate C3? We can see that here we have a straight line. So that means C1 plus C2 plus C3 they're going to add up to 180 degrees. And we know that C1, it is 60 degrees. C2 will also be 60 degrees. Remember, because HC, it is a bisector. Let's not forget that. So we can determine C3. So let us firstly determine C3 first. So to answer this question, which is 9.3 um, um, for two marks, we're going to say angle C3 will be equals to how much? Will be equals to... 180 degrees subtract what? 180 degrees subtract C1 and C2. But we know that C1, it is 60 degrees. C2, it is also 60 degrees. So, oh, that's a very long way. Remember the blue line, the blue line is 120 degrees. You can just say C3 minus 120 because we told that this angle is 120. It's still the same. That's the quicker way, uh, writing 260s, still fine. So C3, in this case, we're going to say, um, and you give the reason. Why do you say C3 is equals to this? The reason is angles on straight line. Simple as that. And therefore, 180 degrees minus 120 degrees in my mind. How much is it? We get 60 degrees. We get that this is 60 degrees. That means angle C3 will be equal to 60 degrees. Let's jump back to our diagram. So C3 will be equal to 60 degrees. Now let's add the C3 and angle F to see how much we get. So when we say angle C3 plus angle F, how much do we get? C3, we said it is 60 degrees. Angle F, it was given to be 120 degrees. So when we add them together, 60 plus 120, we can see that we get 180 degrees. Now, this is the converse of power. So now for a fact that these lines are, um, they I mean, for a fact that these angles, they add up to 180 degrees, that means DC will be parallel to EF, which is co interior because we've proven by these two angles. Do you understand what I'm saying? Um, that means that's how it works. 
Um, the, there is another easiest way, which is I just realized now, now, right? There is another easiest way. Uh, we say this is 60, 60. You could have just added these two angles. It was going to be 120, and this is 120, 120. It will form uh, corresponding, not, not cor yeah, corresponding, it will form F. This is 120, this is also 120, but we needed to calculate this first. Ah, it is still the way to go, okay? That was the easiest way and the quickest way. But because we use this method, it is still fine. So that means we can say, therefore, DC, it is parallel to EF. What did we use? We used co-interior angles then we are good, okay? Oh, you can just say 120 here because this is C1, it's 60, C2 is gonna be 60. When you add them, it's 120, 120 corresponding angles. Therefore, these lines are parallel. It is still fine, you can do it that way. I just realized it now, now, okay? All right. That will be 9.3. And in 9.4, it says to us, show that, prove that DC is equals to DE. DC is equals to DE. DC, which is this side, is equals to DE. And we're told that DE is 30 degrees. So we need to prove this. This is the simplest, simplest question ever. Here's the thing. How much is it? Two marks. How are you going to write it? We want to prove that DC is equals to DE, right? Uh, let me go back to the diagram. I want to prove that DC is equals to DE. Check. A, B, C. D, it is a parallelogram. Here, you are told. AD is the same as DC. AD, you are given, is 30 centimeters. So that means DC will also be 30 centimeters. DE, it is, ah, that means they are the same. Baba, we can't complicate life. So that means we're going to say, DC will be equals to how much? DC will be equals to AB, right? Which is opposite sides of parallelogram, right? Therefore, DC in this case will be how much? DC in this case will be 30 because AB, it was given that it is 30. So that means DC will also be 30 centimeters. Now, we can simply say that DC is equals to DE. Is equals to DE. Why? 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 Because both of them, they're equals to 30 centimeters. Simple. We are done for two marks. And then the last question, which is 9.5, it says to us, DCFE is a rhombus. We need to prove that DCFE is a rhombus. Let's go. D. C, F, E, it is a rhombus. So now how do we prove that the diagram it is a rhombus? I mean, like the interior angles are not 90 degrees, which cannot be a square, number one. And all of the sides, they're supposed to be the same, like square, right? So to answer this question, which is the last question, number 9.4, we can simply just say, what, how, much, how much is it? Three marks. We can simply just say DE will be equals to AB, which is both of them is equals to 30 centimeters. Let's go back, DE and AB. DE is equals to DC, which is 30 centimeters, which is what we proved above, right? And again, we can see that DC, will be equals to, uh, what, what, what did I do? Let's see, DE, we have DE, right? Which is 30 centimeters. DE will be equals to DC, proven, right? And therefore, for a fact that this is 30, 30, that means all of the sides will also be equal, right? So that means for a fact that we have all equal sides, that means we can simply talk about what? We can simply talk about or this, it is a rhombus. So that means we say DE is equals to AB, which is uh, proven above, above 
or you can say in 9.4, right? It is proven uh, that D is equals to AB. Not AB, sorry, DC. DE is equals to D is equals to DC. See, that's why I don't like going back and forth. Let me raise here. DE, we've proven that above that uh, D is equals to DC, which is 30 degrees proven, which is this, right? So that means, it's simple, that means D, C, F, E. D, C, F, E is a rhombus. What will be the reason? The reason is, check, all of the adjacent sides, all sides of rhombus are equal. All sides adjacent are uh, equal and therefore you are most definitely done with your 12 marks.